Very good afternoon to you. It's Gene from Avstar Observatory. Guys, what we're looking at are the historical events uh, relating to the geomagnetic completed reversals uh, going back five million years. And you can see the black bar right at the top uh, represents the last 780,000 years. And that was the time when the Earth's magnetic field made a completed reversal. We're not going to talk so much about the excursions other than to mention the last excursion was 12,000 years ago. And when you put that in comparison to the last completed reversal the Earth made, you know, even that number, even though it's large, is insignificant when you consider the last geomagnetic reversal took place 780,000 years ago. You know, it's, it's interesting and it's well worthwhile not overlooking, you know, the common facts about, you know, geomagnetic reversals, because I think sometimes, um, you know, by just breezing over the topic of geomagnetic reversals, you miss some very important information. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that today and also uh, what is taking place right now, because I think it's really important, guys. You know, the last time our Earth experienced this, we was, if if we was here, I mean that's a, a debatable argument, and I know that it causes a lot of debate in the comment section whether human beings was around in existence seven hundred and fifty, seven hundred and eighty thousand years ago, is, you know, um, a, a topic we're never going to agree on. You know, some people like to think we've been here ever since you know, day one. Whereas, you know, there are some scientific. Uh, you know, paleontologists or whoever, you know, in in their own field would argue that we'd been here around 45,000 years ago. And, you know, that is not the debate. Uh, you can have that discussion in the comment section if you want, but nevertheless, we are here right now whilst the Earth is experiencing a rare, rare anomaly, a rare event, and it has not, never, ever been recorded what we're trying to do at the observatory is this time round is record it at, you know, I, I know some people would say, oh my God, that is an incredible resolution. Every three seconds, why did you need that much data on it? Because there is no other data of an experienced and recorded geomagnetic reversal or an excursion. So we've got it covered. And, um, you know, when we go through this, we will probably be the only observatory with that resolution of data during this geomagnetic reversal. And I believe that that will be critical uh, for the understanding of what actually takes place. It might open up new doors in scientific discovery. Who knows? But we will have it. So one thing that alarms me is that you can clearly see the further we go back over the last five million years, that magnetic reversals were clearly more frequent than common. You know, on average, you could say that they went through a reversal every 300 to 350,000 years. And, you know, that raises questions uh, in my mind is why now has the Earth taken so long to, you know, complete a magnetic reversal? Why is it around half a million years late what has happened to the core or more importantly what has happened to the dynamo that generates the dipoles on our planet and the magnetosphere has it slowed down you know is the big question and could we be approaching a similar time as what mars experienced our neighbor planet because yes it might come as a surprise to a few of you, but our own planet is not too dissimilar to the historical Mars planet in that Mars had a dynamo that generated a magnetosphere and magnetic poles, which it no longer does today. And that tells us clearly that planets can lose their ability to produce a suitable magnetosphere that can protect not just um, the upper atmosphere 
and water on the planet, but in our case, more importantly, protect all the biodiversity. Now, another arguable topic is whether we are the only planet in our solar system to date that has biological life forms on it. And until there is solid evidence presented, we can assume that we are out of the nine planets. And I know that even this uh, very fact, you know, that we, <laughs> this is the thing, you know, with science, the more we understand, the more debate on various things, the more other people want to believe. I mean, do you believe that we have nine planets in our solar system or do you believe that, you know, Pluto is too small to be considered a planet? You know, there's another debate that can be had you know, alongside with how long have human beings been on here. You know, it just opens up cans of worms, I feel, sometimes that don't need to be opened. The fact is that when Mars lost its magnetosphere, its upper atmosphere was subjected to a term described by NASA as sputtering, which is solar erosion of the upper atmosphere. And that is what our planet has been um, dealing with for the last 120 years of it going through this magnetic reversal because when planets go through a magnetic reversal the magnetosphere does collapse to a certain point it is predicted around 5 to 15 percent will be remaining during the poles making that transition which is 85 percent of the protective field that we are accustomed to enjoying um, during normal times. So when we experience a magnetic reversal, you know, it does pose serious threats like, you know, um, causing extra cancers. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. And also causing cardiac arrhythmias. And it doesn't just affect human beings or the climate on our planet. You know, what happens during you know, uh, transitions of the magnetic poles when they go into the reversal is the upper atmosphere gets uh, bombarded by solar radiation which erodes it. And to this very point in time, we are 20 to 25% uh, experiencing less protection than normal. Our primary protective field has weakened by 25%. You know, that just bears giving that a little bit of extra thought. That's a quarter of the normal protection lost that we usually experience or enjoy. And in a lot of cases, take for granted. Because you're listening to a scientist right now who's doing his very best to inform, you know, as many people as I possibly can to this event. Because it is going to pose not just problems with our future climate but the future well-being of all biodiversities and that it mainly includes human beings on this planet because we are not going to be able to go about our normal business as we are accustomed to doing bear that in mind we are not going to go about our normal business because our earth is experiencing this anomaly for the first time if it's an excursion 12,000 years if it's a completed reversal 780,000 years I think one thing you will agree is that these are big numbers very big numbers and this is probably the biggest anomaly that we're experiencing alongside other big anomalies and I've, uh, I've pointed them out. You know, another big anomaly that we're experiencing is that we are returning back into a glacial period. Not an ice age, a glacial period where the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere gets weighted over with ice and snow. A returning back to a 90,000 year cycle. Every 100,000 years and has been ever the case in the history of Earth, as far as we know, the Earth has experienced something known now as the Milinkovitch cycle, which is where the orbit of the Earth changes slightly, and that 
is what regulates glacial and interglacial periods. We're going back into one of those. Again, another huge topic that the press could have a field day with and write about this for weeks and weeks and months to come. But it's unheard of. Completely unheard of. Nobody knows about these anomalies. And I, I think it is the greatest public mistrust by global governments around the world. Because right now you are 25% more likely to get cancer. You are 25% more likely to have a heart attack. And as we progress through this transverse of the poles, that will increase. And not one squeak out of mainstream media not one single squeak from the so-called experts on these topics why the hell is that and i know that in the comment section there will be many people saying they just simply don't care and i can understand why people think like that because when you look and understand some of the problems that we are facing right now. Nothing is being done in favour of protecting the welfare of human beings. And that is because of corruption, sadly. It is because the greed factor outweighs the benefits of doing the right thing. And I hear people talking about, oh, I'm going to do the right thing here. And then you never see them do it. Why is that? I thought I'd change the image to represent the topic that we're talking about. You can see the sun there. Obviously, it's misrepresented by its actual physical size. And you can see the earth and its magnetosphere and all the components of that, which I won't go into. Um, but that is the invisible shield that protects us and those solar winds that contain that radiation is the invisible radiation that burns your skin on a hot day and will do so more quickly now like you already know or you don't need to me to say do, do you notice these things just go out in the sun you'll feel it within half hour you'll be exposed to uh, probably the equivalent to six hours of being in direct sunlight at its highest point you know oh, that's why I say you know what understand that because although you can't see and you can't smell it it is absolutely there still and this what, was, what we're talking about is radiation and you don't want to expose you know your skin cells or other body cells to that because you can damage the deoxyribonuclide acid very easily or the DNA in your body and once that happens you know you go down a, you know a dark road leading towards possibly cancer and that is the real um, threats that people are facing right now and think about it 25% more likely to get it you know if we was in the betting shop putting odds on like that you know we could we could clean up here with those statistics with those facts we could easily clean up the bookie here and milk him for every coin he's got and as time goes on that field that protects us will weaken even further and it's going to change everything it's not just going to change the climate it's not going to change the welfare not just change the welfare of everything biodiversity on our planet it's going to change everything it's just a matter of time but the one thing we do know is that we are on track on course for that to happen you know you need to bear this in mind i told you you know if you ask me what would i do i said i said to you get the hell out of the cities Get out of Dodge right now, as soon as possible, because this hasn't showed any signs in the 10 years that we've been covering it. It's gone faster as, you know, the most recent time. Um, and, you know, the risks are increasing 
all the time. But we live in a time where people, <laughs> believe it or not, and it's so sad to even mention this, that people would pay more attention to Miley Cyrus than they would a scientist, you know, warning 8 billion souls on this planet of what we're looking at. It sickens me because, you know, we are scrimping around here, kicking around in the dust, trying to make the best progress in the, the research in this topic and keeping people informed whilst we have people like Bill Gates that claim to be philanthropists and helping, you know, others in difficult situations of uh, fields, scientific fields, um, you know, get their funding and things like that, but it just never happens. We live in a very ignorant world. It's driven by money, unfortunately. And even though we're doing the best job we can physically here, don't take for granted, please, the fact it took two years to write the program for the Trimax system because that was very painful for me to write that. It took a long time for me to write that program and put the electronics together and I did it sheerly because I realised that this was so important to do. It was so important to inform the public wherever they are of this event and the dangers in which it poses. So, you know, it's not been easy is what I'm saying. And you know, when you see like yesterday, 4,000 people or more view the video, you know, we've probably had an over 100,000 people in the last week view the videos that we've been covering on this topic. And you know, the money that we've raised has been very little. And you know, to put that in perspective, with probably the one of the only observatories recording this anomaly right now, the geomagnetic reversal, and at the same time informing as much as we physically and possibly can. And then adding to that, we're getting the least support. This is funded by just you guys, but poorly funded. And I have to uh, deal with the fact of the abuse you get for asking for help. Can you believe that? This is the world we live in. It's crazy times, guys, and I'm sure you, you will agree. And we have our work cut out still because there is worse decay of our magnetosphere to take place that will change the climate further and it will eventually be knocking at everybody's front door at some point if it hasn't already. So I'm asking you to join me. If you can't physically do something yourself about it, then support somebody that's dedicated, like myself, to doing something about it. We've got in the coming weeks, well, actually, I know the way things go, it's more likely to be months, <coughs> but I wanted to get some more magnetometers out in the field uh, in different countries. And I also wanted to include also muon detectors and they're not cheap to build. You know, just one component costs me on the muon detectors £118 for the silicon photomultiplier. And I'm lucky if I can buy them in small quantities. Sometimes I can't, simple as that. But sometimes the company does offer the availability of small quantities, but you know, you have to pay more for them because the numbers that they would like you to order would be in the thousands. We, can, we couldn't simply do that here. So we have to order when we can, what we can. It's gonna require some help guys, that's all I'm saying. And you know, I really wish people just wouldn't ignore, you know, the link. But it's gotta stop, you know, we all have a part to play and we can all do that our own little bit and it just requires a small effort fill out that little form where you can use your debit card and make a small contribution to what we're doing here at the observatory simple as that and on that note i'm going to mention the link down there in the description 
I'm going to say what I usually do. You know, you take care of your loved ones. The time is at hand right now. And the only other thing for me to say right now is bye for now.